Alrighty, in this video, what we're going to be talking about are prototypes. So I created another little index file. So I have index 03. It's just including this JavaScript file, and then I have an empty JavaScript file. So the first thing that I want to discuss when, when we start talking about prototypes, I'm sure you've, you've, you've seen the word prototype before. And one of the mistakes that a lot of people make with trying to understand prototypes is they, they try to think of them in terms of traditional object-oriented languages. So language like C++ or C Sharp or Java or Python or Ruby that have these classes. And you create these classes and the classes define what that class can do. And then you make object instances and those object instances um, kind of have those that functionality from those classes. It's okay if, you're, if you've never worked with a traditional object or into the language. In fact, that might make this easier because I want everybody to forget about traditional object orientation right now. Forget about the concept of a class or traditional inheritance or anything like that. Because the way the way we implement these sort of things within JavaScript, the way we, we create a sort of uh, reusable code that we can instantiate and manipulate and all that fun stuff is so different. And part of that is because uh, something you have to understand about JavaScript is everything is an object. Even functions are objects. And that's a sort of really weird sort of um, concept to get your head around especially if you come from, from other languages. Like even languages that have first class functions like C Sharp, functions still aren't objects. Now delegates are objects, of course, but uh, those just point to functions. In JavaScript, functions themselves are objects. So in this section, what we're gonna be discussing are prototypes, function prototypes and object prototypes. There's a difference, we'll see um, how they behave. And we're going to talk about the new keyword. The new keyword is very misunderstood. We're going to be talking about constructor functions, which, spoiler alert, they're just actually normal functions. And we're going to be talking about things like object create, object assign, and so on. So, yeah, stuff and things. Um, I guess we can do another recap of basic object notation within JavaScript. So we've seen examples of basic object notation all throughout this course, where we would do something like, uh, my go-to example is person. So we have a person and he has properties such as a name and he might have methods too, or functions. Remember that when I say method, I'm referring to a function that's attached to an object, even though in JavaScript, there is no differentiation. Um, they're all just functions. But anyway, so we can have like, say, um, uh, you know, say hi function, uh, console log, um, hi, my name is this dot name. So we've talked about all this fun stuff. So we can now say person, say hi. We talked about all this stuff in the last section where we have the concept of this, how this is used and all that stuff. So that's a traditional way that we would create an object. But, uh, but it's not necessarily going to be the best way to create an object. Um, because oftentimes what we want to do is we want to generalize the concept of creating an object. So we might create objects all the time in JavaScript, but sometimes we might have a reusable object where we want multiple instances of the same thing. So for example, we might want multiple people, but we don't want to redefine the say hi function every single time we make a new person. Now, obviously we can always do person two uh, name is uh, foo, and then we can say say hi is person dot say hi. So now we've we've successfully created another object that has a different property, but is in it, not really inheriting. I don't want to use that word, but it's um, it's reusing a function from another uh, object. And so that's another way. That's one way we can kind of kind of figure out how to reuse functions throughout our code base. But uh, but let's say that this was a bigger, uh, a more complex example. Like, let's say we had we had the concept of, I don't know, a list, a drag droppable list, right? And on our page, we have multiple ones of these drag droppable lists. And they have all these, they have a million functions, a million different helper functions and properties. And when we want to create a new list, a new draggable list, we don't want to have to repeat and copy over every single property from that, um, uh, from the, from the original list object or whatever. So one, one might do something like this. Um, 
one might say, okay, so what if I what if I abstract the whole idea of creating these objects into a function? And, and that's a that's a perfectly valid thing to do. We could say um, drag drop list, and then maybe drag drop list takes in a parent element, right? So like a ul. So we have like three of these different lists, and um, I mean, hey, I could even come over here and add in some lists. I guess do ul list one, um, u ul list two and ul list three right so we have these three lists and let's pretend they're full of items and stuff and we want to make this reusable reusable widget that allows us to drag and drop stuff like the jquery um uh, sortable plugin so we have this drag drop list and it takes an apparent element and that's awesome so we would say something like um return and we would return a new object and the, the object would have something like um element is parent element and then we might uh we actually might want to do some initialization in this as well we might want to say um uh, var handle equals document create element li handle inner text equals handle and then parent element append child handle so then we might um uh, we wouldn't necessarily need to return the element because what we're going to be returning are is an object that has closures. So we might have something like um, um, begin drag, and that's a function. And the function would begin the drag operation. It would attach event handlers and all that fun stuff. And here we'll just simulate it as inner text equals starting to drag or something like that. So we have we have this sort of this sort of function right here that returns a, a, a object and it returns a unique object every time it's called and it's closing over the parent element in the handle. This is actually an interesting pattern I'm showing you here actually. This is a um this pattern is excellent because it allows us to have private members. For example, the function, the object that's returned only has this begin drag public function that we can call. You won't be able to access parent element or handle. And if we use it like this, we would do like list one equals drag drop list uh, document get element by ID list dash one. And then we can do list uh, two and list three. And let's say, um, so we've created this drag drop list on all three of the elements. We get three handles. Super exciting. They're each unique objects because each time this function is called, a new object is returned. A new closure is returned, in fact, uh, which is super exciting. So if you do like list one dot begin drag, you'll notice that um, only the, the the first list has, has received that notification at the beginning of drag. So this is a very sort of naive uh, uh, i wouldn't say naive but this is this is a valid thing to do when you want to create reusable functionality but it, it really isn't the best way there uh, there's a lot of a lot of issues with this but i just wanted to start off this discussion about um uh, with showing you guys kind of where we're going with this what we're trying to accomplish we're trying to accomplish having a reusable component that has initialization logic and that returns or, or has a public API on it so we can manipulate that um, uh, that object after we create it. So this is a valid thing to do. But again, like I said, it has some problems. And I, I would say that this would not be the preferred way to accomplish this within JavaScript, except in uh, certain scenarios. So... Um, so yeah, so this is where we're going. And so we see an example of um, this where we're just creating individual objects. We, we now have an example of this, where we're creating this reusable public API thing with initialization logic. But it turns out that, that JavaScript actually has a mechanism to kind of give us the same sort of abilities as this, but is, uh, is better in a couple of ways. And we'll, as we go forward through this section, we'll see why using a prototype in this instance would be better. So, um, so yeah, so that's where we're going with this. Now let's talk about like what actually a prototype is. And then we'll come back to this example later and implement it with prototypes. So what is a prototype? Well, a prototype is something that uh, every single object in JavaScript has. And every single function has. And the function prototype is different from an object prototype, even though a function prototype does have a object prototype. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly define um, or rather quickly show you guys what object prototypes are, not function prototypes. So if you've seen prototypes before attached to functions, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to object prototypes. And I'll, I'll try to refer to them as protos because they're fu uh, functionally different from object uh, function prototypes. But you have to understand object prototypes or protos before you can understand function prototypes. 
So um, so let's go ahead and do some basic prototypal inheritance. So I'm going to create a person. And he's going to have a say hi function. And uh, he's also going to have a name property. His name is going to be uh, not set. right? And then the say hi will say console log hello I am plus this dot name. Okay, what if we wanted to create another person, but we did not want to repeat all of the properties and functionality of this original person? So this person is really just an object. He's basic object. I, I can say person dot say hi right here, right? Hello, I'm not set. But what if I wanted to create an, another person? What I can do is I'm going to be using a we weird bit of syntax here. I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm also going to say person, and then I'll do something like, um, um, I don't know, raise wage function console log. I can't do that. Okay. So we have re uh, maybe return false to indicate that there was a failure. So let's say we wanted to create a manager. So I'm going to create a manager, and what I'm going to do is going to be interesting. I'm going to set the manager to be an empty object, okay? So just straight up empty object and no properties on it. And I'm going to use a bit of syntax on this manager object that is not actually standard. It is going to change and is a terrible thing to do, but it's important for illustrative purposes. I'm going to say manager dot under underscore 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 proto underscore underscore equals person. OK, so now with all that done, I'm going to jump back over here. And I'm going to do manager dot say hi. Boom. Hello, I'm not set. So notice that the manager object doesn't have a say hi function on it. But suddenly we can access the say hi function. And it seems to be that it's, um, that it's uh, executing this function right here. That's interesting. Let's, uh, let's see what happens if we change the manager's name. So I'm going to say manager dot name equals boss man or something. I don't know. Save that out. Now come over here and do manager dot say hi. Hello, I am Bossman. So you see, effectively what we've done with this one line of code is we've done what we were doing here, but manually. So in effect, this code right here is equivalent to manager to equals name equals boss man say hi is person dot say hi uh, raise wages person raise wage. So that's basically equivalent to what we're doing here. So what is what is this? What is this underscore underscore proto? Well, well, it's a, 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 the proto of an object is something that every single object in JavaScript has. Don't believe me? Well, look at person. Person, we don't set a proto anywhere in person. But I can come in here and say person dot underscore underscore proto underscore underscore hit enter. And we get this empty object. We don't get undefined. We get an empty object. Well, what's seemingly an empty object. And it has a bunch of these properties on it. So we see that every single object, including functions too, if I were to do uh, function add left right, uh, the body doesn't matter. I can do add un uh, underscore underscore proto underscore underscore, and you'll notice what I get back is a empty function, not this function, but an empty function. So what is this? Well, first of all, this is not going to work in Internet. Ex well, well, I think it'll work in Internet Explorer 11, but not in Edge because the behavior of this property has been changed. Like I said in a later specification. In fact, for you future people, this code might not even work. There's a way to. There's a standard way to do what I just did here, uh, but we'll discuss it later. Uh, don't ever uh, manipulate this special variable. This is a. This is a very very special variable that changes the behavior of your object. I'm just showing it to you guys for illustrative purposes because this is what happens behind the scenes in a lot of the built-in um, uh, JavaScript syntax. So what, what it is, is it's the object's prototype. And a prototype is nothing more than an object. So yes, even even object prototypes have, have objects. Um, eventually you'll get to, so if I did um, manager underscore underscore proto, so that's an object. I can also do underscore underscore proto, and that's an object. And I, now I can do underscore underscore proto, and I'll finally get null. So every object but the object prototype itself has a prototype. And the prototype is used for property resolution. So as you, as I'm sure you're aware, a JavaScript object is nothing more than a bag of properties. Kind of like a dictionary in C Sharp or a map in C++. Um, 
or a hash in um, or associative array in PHP. It's just a bag of uh, of data, and, and like I said, everything in in JavaScript is an object. So um, an object object is you know uh, prop one is blah prop two is blah it's really just a bag of properties that we can access um, with a couple of different syntaxes I can do obj at prop one or I can do obj uh, dot prop two or whatever and that's how we access objects so a quick recap of what an object is it's a bag of properties now the question is the question that prototypes solve is what happens if you try to access a property on an object that doesn't exist on that object? Because as you see here, manager has no property. Well, it does have a property. We set the name here. But imagine, imagine we didn't. Manager has no properties. So when I try to do manager.say hi, whoops, say hi, it finds the say hi function. And how does it do that? Well, it does it by the JavaScript internally. We'll check to see if this object has a property. And we use the has own property method. So if manager has own property, say hi. No, it doesn't. Then what the JavaScript runtime is going to do is going to say manager dot underscore underscore proto underscore underscore has own property say hi and says, wow, that's true. So then what it does is it goes ahead and it invokes that function. So it will do manager.proto.sayHi.call on manager. And we get that behavior. So basically, here, here's the step. Here's the step of prototypal inheritance. Um, I'm just going to repeat this. If I want to say manager.sayHi, first step, step one, um, manager.hasown property say hi which is false so that leads us to step two manager dot underscore underscore proto underscore underscore has own property say hi which is true and then finally because that returned true it now knows how to access the say hi function simply by doing manager dot underscore underscore proto underscore underscore dot say hi dot call manager and that gives us our result so that is the that those are the steps of what it does. Let's do another one. Let's do um, let's do manager dot two string. What do you think happens there? I don't see a two string method. There's not even a two string method on person. As you see, um, two string doesn't exist on any of these objects. Remember, has own property only returns true if that object actually contains that property. So what goes on here? Well, let's walk through the steps again. First, manager has own prop has own has own property to string false okay well then manager dot proto has own property to string false now what do you think it does well now it does has own manager dot proto dot proto has own property true now that's interesting what is manager ha uh, proto proto manager proto proto is the object prototype which unless you specifically do something really weird and bizarre that i've never found a use case for all of your objects the prototype chain will end once it re re reaches the object prototype. And now, because manager proto proto has on property to string, it'll simply do, the, the runtime will simply do manager dot proto dot proto dot to string dot call manager. And you see, it's very important for me to say manager proto proto to string dot call manager, because we have to change the context of this. Remember, if I had just simply invoked to string without using call. Um, well, we'll still get object object. Um, let's do uh, let's do the other example. Let's do the um, the says hi. So if I did manager dot proto dot say hi and I just invoked that, then it says hello. I am not set. Now why does it do that? Well, it does it because if we don't change the context of the this in this by using call. Remember, if I did say hi dot call manager, I'll get that different. Um, Oh, I forgot to set the name back to boss man. That's why I was doing that. But see, say hi still does not set, but then call manager says, hello, I'm boss man, because we need to change the context of the this. When we do manager.proto say hi, we're literally invoking person.say hi. Why are we invoking that? Because person is literally the prototype of manager. All right. 
All right, so there's a lot more to talk about with prototypes, and we will continue this in the next video.